Hey guys, Michael Corsentino with my November 2017 lighting tutorial for BehindTheShutter.com and Shutter Magazine. Guys, if you haven't already signed up and got yourself a subscription to Shutter Magazine, do yourself a favor and head over to BehindTheShutter.com where you can get yourself all squared away for a subscription to the print magazine as well as the digital edition. And you can also stop into Barnes and Noble where you will find Shutter Magazine uh, ready to snap it up and grab it off the shelves. Uh, uh, if there are any copies left because it's a hot it's a hot item okay so this month we're talking about advanced beauty lighting uh, and the reason that I am calling it be advanced is for no other reason than it is falls outside the use of one light we're using multiple lights so that seems to uh, be what a lot of people consider advanced so don't let the term uh, intimidate you that's the only reason that I'm calling it advanced we're going to use some gels uh, some different tools uh, I'm going to show you how to do some full figure stuff which you can see here we've got uh, head and shoulders uh, and we're going to do some three quarter and we've also got some full length so I'll show you all of those we have a couple different wardrobe changes to look at uh, two which you can see here so we'll kind of look at all the tools and techniques to create this uh, these two images uh, these two sets okay so let's start off we'll dig right in and take a look at our first setup so this is the uh, obviously the lighting diagram that we used so basically everything starts with your key light okay so here I've got the key light and the key light is a Moli, Mola Demi beauty dish uh, with a pro photo head right here and it's powered by a 7b uh, generator and I'm going to show you a gear slide for all this stuff as well um, but right now we'll just use the lighting diagram underneath there to provide fill under the chin and to open up the shadows in the eyes cast by the uh, beauty beauty dish from above uh, is a uh, lastolite triflector uh, that's a, re a three panel reflector uh, which has silver and white sides that you can reverse uh, to give you the look that you want. Um, I, I typically end up using the white because it's a little softer. Sometimes you need a little more efficiency or a little bit more specular kind of contrasty look. So sometimes in those cases, I'll use the silver side. Uh, and that uh, just, you know, is angled uh, at the, uh, pretty much the exact opposite of the key light so that it catches the key light reflection and bounces that light back up into the model. And you can see here that it creates a nice soft catch light. If you use the silver side, you'll get a little bit more of a pronounced catch light, okay? Uh, I've got the uh, uh, key light, the height of the key light in such a way and the angle of the key light in such a way that you can see here, you've got this nice little crescent catch light on the top of the model's eyes, okay? Um, and we've got, this is where things start to enter into the more advanced stuff because we're using um, accent lights, okay? So I've got accent lights up to providing side light that is gelled and then I've got an accent light for a hair light which is giving us this really nice kind of layered sophisticated look and that's really what you get when you add in more than one light you start to really uh, sculpt and create um, you know dimension uh, and a, a much more sophisticated much more polished kind of look especially in beauty um, but you can do a lot with one light and I, I always you know will be a champion of one light but it's a lot of fun to add in some additional lights and see what you can do and then play with color with gels and stuff. So for the hair light, which you can see this hash marked outline here, I'm using a square Ellen Chrome 2x2 two two, uh, softbox, one of their portrait light, uh, very inexpensive softbox, and that has uh, boomed overhead. Uh, and I'm powering that uh, with a uh, quadra, an Ellen Chrome quadra, 400 watt second quadra, and everything's triggered with Pocket Wizard so that I can use these, you know, Pro Photo as well as Ellen Chrome together and trigger them all manually uh, using Pocket Wizards. That's one of the nice things to basically use what you have. I needed some an extra light, and the Ellen Chrome is really easy to boom because it is so light, the quadra specifically. Um, okay, so now that I've made a real good mess of this light, oh wait, we didn't talk about the side lights. So for the side lights, I've got. Um, Profoto 500 watt second uh, B1s uh, with a seven inch reflector. That's the standard reflector on each one. Um, and then those are gelled, okay? So I've got uh, yellow on this side and a uh, kind of blue purple, we'll just call it purple P on this side. Uh, and that is creating, um, introducing some really nice kind of color side to side and you'll see this in some of them it's a little bit more pronounced in others I, I wanted to keep it subtle I really didn't want to go crazy and introduce too much and kind of hit, hit 
hit it over, make it, make make it hit you over the head. Uh, but I wanted a nice kind of little kiss of color, and that's what I did here. So you know, the lower power that you use on the lights, the the more kind of um, intensity that you're going to get with your gels. Um, gels are really interesting, and I'm still kind of learning my learning the ropes when it comes to gels. I'm using them a, a lot more in my photography, so I encourage you to play with them. Uh, but they are a little counterintuitive, so if you want more color, you typically want to use lower power on your lights. And in fact, next month I'll be doing uh, uh, some a uh, tutorial on how to create some really intense colors with gels. Um, okay, so let's move on and let's look at some, some of the other shots that were used creating this uh, lighting setup. Uh, oh, actually we have our uh, our gear slide first. Okay, so here is all the uh, equipment that was used. So you've seen this in some of my other tutorials. I'm using this wind-up stand that Manfrotto makes along with their super boom uh, boom arm. Uh, this just makes it super easy. You can use all sorts of stuff, but this just makes uh, life very easy uh, because you can crank it up um, and the boom makes, you know, getting the light where you need it and articulating it. It's got all these points of articulation, you know, cranks here and here and here and even here so that you can really dial in exactly the pitch and the angle and all that stuff uh, that you need to uh, position your light much more easily than having to, you know, get up and down on a ladder and all that. So uh, great stuff when you when you can bring this in or rent it, you know, do because it, it'll make your life much easier. Um, so we've got the light, the uh, uh, Pro head, a, a Pro B head powered by a 7B pack. This is a 1200 watt second pack. Uh, with an extension cord because you're going to need some length to get you know up onto that uh, light stand, that boom arm. Uh, as I said, pocket wizards triggering everything. Uh, and then the Mola Demi Beauty Dish. Now this also had a sock on it to soften, okay? And you can just take that off if, if, it's, if you're, it's not giving you the specularity that you want. I wanted a kind of a softer look, so I went with that sock. It's just a diffusion panel, that they call it a sock. Uh, underneath that was the triflector, which you're seeing here. And again, so you can see how this reflector really gives you a lot of flexibility because each of these panels uh, can be articulated on these little uh, pivoting arms so that you can bring in or take out as much light as you want. Uh, and you can also angle them, uh, you know, front to back. Um, so it's, it's really useful. I, I love this thing. I use it on most of my beauty and portrait work. Um, and everything was metered using a Sekonic uh, L758DR. Um, and you can see here that the equipment that I'm using is legacy equipment. It is not the most up-to-date current digital stuff uh, that's out there. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I want to work with professional gear, but I don't want to spend a million dollars in order to do it. So if you you know you can always rent uh, the digital packs, and you can always you know pick up a digital meter. But I use what I have, and what I have works, and I don't really mind working with manual equipment. Um, you know, uh, I'm able to make beautiful pictures with it, so why not? Uh, okay, so that is the gear for this particular thing. Uh, now I also want to talk about the side lights. That was the key light. Okay, this is the gear for the key light. Right, that's what I wanted to tell you. And as we move on, now we've got the gear for the accent lights, which are adding in our color for our gels. So you can see here that I've got two 500 watt second B1s with the standard reflector. That's the seven inch reflector. I typically put that to about seven. Uh, that's, they're called zoom reflectors because you can zoom them along this little chart here and they'll give you different kinds of uh, different quality of light. Um, and for my gels, I'm using my Roscoe Color Effects Gel Kit. These are 12 by 12 gels. Um, and again, I've got yellow on one and purple on the other. And that, uh, they, these work great. Um, so you don't have to necessarily have to buy big rolls of gel to get cool effects. You can, by all means, and Roscoe makes great rolls as well, but I find that these kits really handy. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at, next is going to be the overhead hair light arrangement. Okay, so for this, as I mentioned, I used a, a Ranger Quadra, uh, and you can see here how little and teeny this head is. A uh, really lightweight head, great for booming, which you can see here. I'm using a Kupo grip boom with a baby steel boom arm. Um, and that light obviously goes here, and this is the Portra Light Square softbox, which I'm using as my hair light. So real simple, uh, really easy to work with, and it gets the job done. Again, using a pocket wizard to trigger so that I can trigger Profoto uh, and um, Ellen Chrome lights at the same time, albeit manually. Uh, in other words, not digitally, so I'm not, I'm not 
uh, working with the Profoto Air Trigger uh, or the Skyport and the uh, Ranger system and the in the Ellen Chrome system. I'm just working with Pocket Wizards. It's, it's kind of the levels the playing field, so to speak, and makes it all very generic and just triggers with one radio frequency. Okay. So let's look at some of the other images created using this setup. I've left the lighting diagram here. I'm not going to keep drawing on it, but this will allow you to see what was used to create this look. So again, here we're just doing this uh, portrait kind of head and shoulders lighting setup. And then I'm going to show you the three quarter um, and uh, full figure uh, lighting setup that we use next. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we've done a wardrobe change here. We've kept our lighting uh, the same. So you can see here uh, the same effect, and you can see the color being introduced side to side. Not too much, but just enough to kind of really add some interest uh, and some mood to the picture. And again, this is our model Olivia, who is amazing. Olivia Ashton Martin, she's phenomenal, and uh, had a great stylist. Um, and uh, makeup artist, uh, stylist was uh, Rachel Nicole Velez. She's awesome. I work with her often. And uh, Evelyn Ruiz, who had the, the hair and makeup, another awesome talent. Um, big advocate of working with a team when you can. Okay, so now we've changed the lighting. So here's what we here's what I did for the full figure lighting. Okay, so basically all I've done is removed the triflector uh, reflector because obviously we don't need fill uh, underneath the uh, chin of the model because we've got work on a psych. We've got a white floor, so that is bouncing all sorts of light back up. So we're fine with what we have. And I also for fill additionally I added in a strip box underneath the beauty dish. Okay, and again, this has a sock on it. Um, so that's giving me nice soft light. It's illuminated. Why I do the, um, and this is something that I learned from Melissa Rodwell, a really talented fashion shooter and friend of mine, uh, stacking the uh, strip box underneath the beauty dish. What it does is the beauty dish gives you the illumination for the, uh, for the face and the strip box illuminates the rest of the figure. Right, so it gives you a nice overall even illumination. And then of course we've got our side to side lighting with our gels, our two accent lights. And you can see here that there's still color being added in from the sides. Again, nice and subtle, but it's there. Uh, and then I also added in a white V flat over here just to help add in some light, uh, to bounce some light back from here into here. It's not exactly the same angle, but you get the point. It does, it does add some fill light into the uh, into the image. Okay, and here's another image done that way. Now this setup also works really well with three quarter. We're gonna look at that in a minute, but I think I have another gear slide for you. Okay, right, so here is our full figure lighting. Uh, so here we've got everything that we had in the key light in the first uh, setup, except uh, what we're doing is we've removed the triflector uh, fill reflector and we've added in a couple other things. We've added in the strip box, we've added in the V-flat. Uh, I'm only just using one part of that just to bounce light back in. Um, and we've added in this uh, 500 watt second strobe. Okay, so that's it. It's really simple stuff. Uh, like I say, I, I've called it advanced because we're using multiple lights, but uh, it's kind of a misnomer. It's pretty simple stuff, uh, but the effects are really compelling in, in my humble estimation. All right, so let's take a look at this same lighting effect on the three quarter. And you can see here that we get some really beautiful results uh, using this setup, right? That's that one and this one. And they pair really nicely together in spreads. So let's just, to finish things off, take a look at some of the spreads. And there we go. And lastly, that one. Okay, well that's gonna wrap it up for this month's tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed viewing it as much as I enjoyed creating it. And I encourage you to try these things for yourself and get out there and swing for the fences. And by all means, post on um, Facebook and do tag me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Until next month, this has been Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine.